Hello everybody, it's time for coffee time. Tonight is really going to be good. We've got Corey Lester, Tracy's son, is going to be joining us. And we've got some people to pray for tonight. Kelly Brooks, Tracy needs prayer. She's got like a something wrong with her eye, abrasion in it, and it's very painful. So she needs, totally needs a uh, prayer and I hope y'all had a good Easter I know that it was a very special time of year for everybody I mean you just think upon what Jesus did for us on the cross and it's just so special I know my sister went to a sunrise service which was really nice I've never been to one hopefully if the world stands another year <laughs> I'd like to go to one I think it'd be very interesting but tonight we're going to, I'm going to read from Proverbs 3. I'm trying to give Corey time to get on, but um, I'm going to go ahead and read this. You know, with all the things going on in the world, all the chaos, all the wars, all the rumors of wars, a lot of things that you'll see that's happening now, you see in Matthew 24 and in Revelations, but, you know, God says to us in Proverbs 3, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine my son despise not the chastening of the lord neither be weary of his correction um hello samantha and hello kelly we are waiting on Corey to join us tonight and we're reading for proverbs 3 and we started at verse 5 about how we should trust in the lord especially in times like this because we don't know what's going to happen next. But we know who holds our future. And we know where we're going when we leave this earth. So everything's going to be alright. Uh, for whom the Lord loves, he corrects. And even as a father, the son whom he delights. Happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. Let me see if I can send Corey a friend request. Well, we'll just wait on him. Okay. Um, she is more precious than rubies and all the things... Thou can desire or not to be compared unto her. That's wisdom. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is, happy is everyone that retains her. The Lord by wisdom has found the earth. By understanding has he established the heavens. Well, thank you, Samantha. I sure don't feel like that. <laughs> By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the view. My son, let not them depart from thy eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall thou, they be life unto thy soul and grace unto thy neck. Then shall thou walk in thy way safely and the foot shall not stumble. When you lie down, you shall not be afraid, and you shall, though, yea, thou shalt lie down, and the sheep shall be, sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Now, if that's not something nowadays with all the stuff that's going on in the world, just remember Proverbs 3. It says that we're going to lie there lie down and sleep and have sweet sleep and we don't have to worry about all this stuff 
and you know you turn on the news and you see all this and that and it's it's coming closer but look at the end results that's what matters the end is that we're going to be with the lord and that's a good thing um there's davy davy i may have to bring you on here buddy let you give a testimony we're going to give Corey a few more minutes. Davy can join us next week if he like for a testimony. Withhold not good from them who is due when it is in the power of your hands to do it. Say not to the neighbor, go and come again tomorrow. I will give to you when you have, when you have the means. Devise not evil against your neighbor, seeking he dwelleth securely by thee. Seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Um, strive not with a man without cause, if he has done you no harm. Those things, Proverbs has 31 chapters. Most months, except for 30 days, has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31 except February, which we know has a leap year as well. But there is a chapter for every day. And if we study Proverbs every day, if we just read that one chapter, how much smarter, how much of a blessing would that be to us? I think that'd be very good. I've done that once, but it's been years ago. I need to get back to doing that. Um, we're still waiting on Corey Lester. But while we're waiting, I'm going to tell you some cute things about Corey. I used to go to church with Corey. He lives in Nashville now. And he and Jeanette Jolly are about the same age. Jeanette's a few months older than Corey. Well, anyway, they used to fuss and just practically fight. They did not like each other, and Corey was always trying to be nice to these other kids. I remember at church, um, Ray and Brenda Hill's little girls he hit one of them with a rock. Thank you, Joy. God bless you, too. So they were all upset. Well, I knew the reason he did that was because they would not play with him. And they shunned him. They didn't like him, and I knew that. And I took up for him, which was wrong, probably, but I did anyway. He used to come to my house and play the piano. And that's when he was like, five years old. He just texted me and said, are you ready, y'all? And I told him to send me a friend, an invite or a friend request. Well, anyway, um, they they always had this little sibling rivalry, which they were almost like siblings because Tracy and I were a lot like sisters. But <laughs> it was funny because now they're grown and we look back over that, and it's funny. They'll both laugh about it now, but then Jeanette had a, a little girl, Lucy, and Davy had a little boy, Harley, and so they were they became friends first thing. They, hey, Corey, uh, if you don't know how to get on here, call your mom and ask her, but I think it's you just send me a friend, an invite, or let's see. Tracy, tell him how to get on here. Let's see, add Corey Lester, let's see. I sent him an invite, I hope that's right. Because this is going to be funny and it's going to be good. We want to hear what God's done in his life over the last 31 years. I know he's got a beautiful little family. And it's sent. Now let's see what happens. But anyway, that's just a little bit of background on Corey. Corey, I remember I got so aggravated at David and Tracy. Well, David, because we go to church. And if Corey had not practiced, which he was little, he was a little kid. If he had not practiced his singing, David would not let him on the stage at all. He said, no, you're going to have to practice. So Corey did, and 
I have to admire David because Corey turned out to be an excellent singer and uh, musician. He plays piano and I think guitar, but he's doing a lot of things in Nashville that um, glorifies the Lord. I'm so glad to see him serve God, you know, because if you serve the Lord in your youth, that's just absolutely amazing. I wasn't as bright as that, so I didn't really fully give my life over to God until I was about 36 years old, and I'd already made so many crazy mistakes. It's like, um, then you send me one. Call your mom and ask her how to do that. Tracy, call Corey and tell him how to do this. But anyway, I had um, hurt people and hurt my life, and I just turned over one night in bed, and I said, Lord, if there's anything left in my life, it is yours. I don't even want it. So that's what happened. I gave my life to the Lord, and a few weeks later, I was in church. Um, I smoked pot. I, you know, I did a lot of things wrong, but um, maybe... That was the first thing that God really took from me. I just never needed it after I went to the church and I came home and it was Wednesday night and I smoked me a little pot. But then Sunday morning came and I went back and I just, I didn't really feel convicted of it. I just didn't need to smoke it anymore. Um, there was something else took its place. And um, I'm not putting anybody down for what they do. I'm just saying that the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's, um, it's time for us to draw near to the Lord like we've never before. I do know that. And, you know, uh, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but it's what comes out of his heart. And, you know, there's a lot of people that don't do anything wrong. They don't drink. They don't smoke. They don't cuss. They don't do a lot of things. But yet there's evil in their heart, and there's a self-righteous judgment spirit. There he is. And we have to make sure that we don't have that. And now. Come on, Corey. We're adding you, connecting, and there he is. <laughs> I've been telling some things on you, Corey. Oh, no. It's all true. Yeah. It, it probably is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Told how your dad used to make you practice or you couldn't sing in church. Remember? Uh, <laughs> you but look at you. He wouldn't let me sing. Yeah, there was a time. I don't Not know without if practice. Didn't. I didn't, yeah, that, that, that was the truth. Hey, when we were singing in gospel quartet, there wasn't none of us. I don't care if it was the kids or mom or John Allen. We weren't going on the stage until everybody had their parts down. <laughs> I think John yeah, Allen down here, he can attest to that, buddy. We, uh, and I think too, yeah, now that I'm a worship leader, I'll tell, more, I'll tell a little more about my story. But even now as a worship leader, I think preparing my team for service, it's like, you know, They'll be like, oh, this is a long rehearsal. I'm like, you don't have any idea what a long rehearsal is until you've gone back to Oak Hill Christian and sent to Jeff and Denise and Ray and Mom and John Allen and rehearse, wait to see my brother home literally all Sunday afternoon, just sing it that Sunday night. <laughs> I remember they were just practicing. practice. You know, Dad, Dad was, he did want to do things the right way. You know, and it wasn't any purpose. It was always he felt like God deserved our best. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, that's everything he did. Um, I love my father very much. I only had that. Somebody accolade. It, it, yeah, it translated in every other area. He wanted to do something that way. Um, hopefully, I, I got some of that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, thank you. You totally did. This off my you totally did. I tried, to, you. tried to do it on my well, laptop. Tell me. And, uh, it worked. I decided to do it on my laptop. Sorry. I don't know if it's a delay with everybody else. It's kind of a delay here and it freezes. I don't know why. Make sure I'm on the side.
Is it freezing out there, guys? What's going on? Okay. Your mom needs prayer. She's got a, some kind of something wrong with her eye again. Okay. All right, I switched to Wi-Fi. Hopefully that'll be a little better. Okay. Um, your mom's got something wrong with her eye, and I've got a friend, Kelly Brooks, that needs prayer. And um, we got quite a few people on here now. Le Tracy said slow internet. You got slow internet. Got uh, to say something. I just uh, I switched over to Wi-Fi. So well, okay, that looks better. Okay, we good now. You want to lead us in prayer for these people, Corey, or do you want to close? It's whichever you want to do. Either way, um, can y'all hear me? Okay, is that better? We can now. You're coming in good. Okay. You're coming in good. Perfect. All right. Well, let's pray. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for tonight. I thank you for Cherry and uh, for the blessing that she is, and just taking time out of out of the week to just seek you and to encourage people to draw closer to you and. Uh, we thank you that we can we can have as much of you as we want. It just takes us to take the step and spend time with you and being intentional. I thank you that this this uh, this ministry truly is a is a blessing to people throughout their week, and uh, I thank you for her heart to do that and for mom and um, I thank you for all that uh, that you've done in, in their lives and how that you can use those situations to uh, you know do a work in their lives and their testimonies encourage others as they hear it. God, I pray for every need um, for anyone that's watching this. I pray that uh, your Holy Spirit would go before them, that you would do a work tonight. Even somebody may not know you. Maybe they're just passing through Facebook and they hear Jesus for the first time. I pray that something that we say, something that we do would uh, draw people closer to you. So be with us um, during this time and uh, may our words glorify you and uh, everything that we say and do tonight bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. amen. It is such, I mean, everybody's excited because you're on here tonight. Matt was like, yeah, <laughs> and Davey's excited. We don't know how many people we've got watching, okay. but we shared it, and it's innumerable. And you know something, Corey? Your mama said this before, too. We don't know, because this is all posted to YouTube under Graham's Coffee Time. Brother Harwood says something. Hello, Sister Cherry and Brother Corey. Hey. And uh, she said, you know, we might be gone before anybody really hears this, and it really hits home with them. We don't know, but times are getting pretty close. For sure. Oh, Very yeah, that's, with them. I'm going to turn know. this off. I just wanted to pull this up on my laptop so I can see if anybody comments. I can't do it on my phone for some reason. But uh, you said a good point there, and that's, that's uh, yeah. I mean, that's a sermon all in itself, that sometimes when we're planting seeds, we don't always get to see the harvest. You know, you may cross someone's path at, you know, Bilo, or they don't call it Bilo anymore, so my age, Food City, or whatever they call it, Walmart, you may encounter someone wherever you are and share Jesus with them, but you don't know how, you don't know the full impact that you might have. Um, you know, in ministry, people come and go from churches, and you know, you try to pastor them well, and, and uh, you try to plant seeds, but you don't always know. Um, you never really see. I think back to people like Billy Graham. You think Billy Graham, I mean, he never knew uh, after he passed, he will never be able to see the full impact that his ministry had on the world. Um, and sometimes you don't get to, and we're That's not necessarily true. called to, we're called to just be obedient and plant. Um, so I thank y'all for, for being obedient Even and, no one you know, we're just called it. to plant. Right. Right. Even yeah. if no one ever hears or listens ever, it's not, it's the obedience that God's looking for. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And that's what we've got that's to it. remember. I mean, of all people, Tracy and myself are totally not, not qualified to do what we're doing. But God calls the ones <laughs> that are not qualified so that when they do it, it. he will get the glory. No? That's it. That's, that's it. And, and so isn't, it, isn't it like Jesus? Be I mean, we well, doing it. 
I mean, and we think back to all of the disciples and all of the baggage and things that, that they went through and, and uh, you know, God was still able to use them. And, you know, there's a, uh, there's a quote that he'll turn a mess into a message. And um, I think sometimes, I think yes. Jesus picked those people as um, kind of like a, a way to kind of, you know, I mean, back in that time, he was combating this religious ideology and, you know, all these other churches had all of these legalistic things and everybody was very uppity and pompous and everything about the religion. And, and here comes Jesus on the scene and he's like, I'm going to take an alcoholic and I'm going to take an adulterer. I'm going to take a murderer and I'm going to, I'm going to change these guys and I'm going to let them change the world through my power. And isn't it just like Jesus, isn't that encouraging for us to know? And uh, it's not popular, right? Cause we, we in in modern christianity we we approach church and ministry like we have to have it all together but jesus says i'll take you right where you are right you know, i'm thankful that jesus found me exactly. and didn't you know he didn't require me to be abc and cleaned up and you know um so Amen. i'm thankful jesus found me and accepts me for who i am right where i am and you know something corey as long as we're in this flesh this flesh cannot please God. His, the blood right. of Jesus is what pleases God. And when we're trying, you know, we, and just about the time you think, hey, I'm doing good, I'm getting in church, I'm doing all this, I'm doing all these works, bam, the devil will hit you hard. And he'll bring you right back down right. to where you've got to go back to the cross and start all over. That's just the way that's just the way God allows it because he wants to keep us humble and he shows us how right. if we could do it on our own, why would Christ had to have come? Why would there be an Easter? You know, we wouldn't need a savior if we could figure it out on our own. We wouldn't have needed mm -hmm. Jesus to die, mm -hmm. but thank God he did. Cause I certainly well, I need one twenty seven. Right. Right. Uh, so this says who, is qualified only Jesus that to desire everyone is there's a the writings in white and I have a white background my shirt and all I can't hardly read it um, who is qualified only Jesus has that to desire everyone is his work if they desire or whatever that was i probably read it wrong but that's what it seemed to say and joy said amen now corey we want to hear the good stuff how's that baby precious he's uh back there in his room watching cars he's addicted to that pixar movie cars he loves cars he loves trucks he loves construction equipment you know, there's obviously a lot of growth in Nashville, so you see a lot of construction and stuff. So every time we see a dump truck or an excavator, he'll, you know, he goes uh -huh. nuts. So he's uh, he's definitely a boy. He's definitely a boy. He loves all that kind of stuff. So I bet he, I bet he knows how to pray. I bet he uh, knows how to pray at night, doesn't he? We work on that. There'll be sometimes he's like me. You know, sometimes we'll yeah. say, and we always open our prayer with, "Dear Jesus." And he'll say no. <laughs> he'll just be in a. He'll be in one of those moods, you know. Maybe I I made him mad at dinner time because I made him eat all of his food or something, and he'll just be, you know, or got him out of the bathtub, and it'll just ruin his night. He'll be so mad, and he'll just. I'll say, all right, time to pray, dear Jesus. I'll say no. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we are uh, we are intentional as a family to that sounds to, a lot like uh, to either. pray with him at an early age. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if he is cool. half as amazing as <laughs> Nani is, then we are good. We are parents of the year. We've done something right. Yeah. If he turns out great, it's nothing that we've done, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it is. You raise the name in the fear of the Lord, you know? I mean, you, you, you're doing the right thing. And you know something, Corey, that brings me to a point. People don't realize how important it is to teach our children about the word of God and about God, because if we don't do it, Satan is waiting in every school now, whether it be through the sure. curriculum or whether it be through the students to suck them into a world that they don't even need to be in. And we have to be responsible. Yeah. If you're a grandmother and 
your children are working and you don't, you know, you've got some time, put it into those children, put it into those grandbabies, you know, help, yeah. help out the parents and teach them because parents work, they don't have a lot of time. But give us a particularly test. Timely what has too. God done for you? Well, it's, it's, it's particularly timely that you say that too, because we read in the news about, you know, these young ages being exposed to, things that they shouldn't be and you know they're questioning and I, I just say you know I don't get I tried to steer away from politics even in spite of some of my you know my resume would show you otherwise but uh, these days I try to stay apolitical if I can but I'll tell you um, with the whole gender identity right. thing I think if if a child is questioning their identity the only way to show them the right way is that they find their identity in Christ and and Jesus makes uh, makes it very clear um, the scripture points to all the clarity yes, that we uh, need. There's no in between. Um, there's no, you know, denying yes. it. Uh, Christ is very clear. The word is very clear on who we are and who we are in Christ. And when we when we find who we are in Christ, then there's no question. We don't need politicians in Washington to give us the, you know, freedom to any of that. I don't I don't get my identity from any legislation. Um, it comes from the word of God. So, um, yeah, we we definitely Amen. we have a. Uh, I'd say the greatest epidemic facing the world is, is the fact that, you know, this next generation is um, growing up probably further away from God. And it's just a cultural shift, right? It's not, it's not uh, like when we were growing up in the nineties and, uh, or even like on the, on the later years of the, you know, the big charismatic movements on all of that, we were really fortunate growing up, um, being close to church. It's probably one of my biggest testimonies and um, is that, you know, I was always close to ministry. Um, I didn't always, uh, I wasn't always obedient. I wasn't always, you know, a hundred percent or whatever, but I found myself always close to church. Um, I was talking to a pastor friend of mine earlier, um, Caleb Bolton, who's the pastor at Daisy Church of God. He's a good friend of mine. I met him when I was in the youth ministry at uh, Sell Creek Church of God. And I was just, you know, talking about how, you know, when I was younger, I would go from church to church. And, you know, my dad would tell me, you know, a rolling stone gathers no moss. And uh, I used to feel bad about that. But like, man, I really should have done this different. But I also thought, you know, there's a lot of other places I could have been. And, uh, you know, if being at a lot of churches and, you know, running around here and there was the worst that happens. Um, and it wasn't the worst that happened. Um, I had some low points in my life, but I'm, I'm thankful to God that he kept me close. Um, I had parents who were worship leaders. Uh, I didn't really know what a worship leader was back then. I just, you know, everybody just came together. We were all worship leaders, you know. Um, but I think back to my upbringing about how it was just, you know, we, we met with Jesus. And uh, that was, it marked my life. I was, you know, exposed to the baptism of the Holy Spirit at an early age and saw God do some incredible things in a lot of people's lives. But then on the flip side, I saw a lot of things that I didn't like about the church. Um, and, uh, you know, you just have to, like you said, you have to work out your own salvation, but you also have to discern for yourself. Um, you have to learn what you believe um, and how, you know, what the gospel means to you and what salvation means to you and what sanctification looks like to you. And, and, I think if, if I can challenge any of us on here today, it's don't even take anything that we say as your gospel. You have to get in the word. You have to pray your own prayer. You can't allow a preacher or a minister or anybody else to, to be your, um, you know, to be the, it's not a substitute. It's supposed to encourage you, but I'll just challenge you with this. I don't want to step on anybody's toes tonight, but Sunday to Sunday won't, you know, Sunday only won't sustain you. You know, uh, there's a joke we say, I'm a Sunday morning saint, I'm a Monday morning ain't. Uh, but you, I'll tell you, you know, I'm finding out and as I mature in my faith and I mature as a, as a husband and a father, but there's, there's a responsibility on my life to be as, as much like Jesus every day. Um, I would say we should be even more spiritually devoted to Jesus Monday through Saturday than we are on Sunday. And if we can't worship Jesus Monday through Saturday, then we probably aren't on Sunday. And that's a hard word. But if, but if Jesus isn't Lord of our life the rest of the week, then, you know, but it's not a condemnation. It's encouragement because 
you know, it's a, it's a journey. Yes. Sunday morning is like our, that's our, that's our moment to get filled up. It's to celebrate, but it's also a continuation of everything that we've experienced from God throughout the whole week. So if you're going through a dry spell and I used to, I'm saying this because I'm speaking from experience and it wasn't too long ago that Sundays were my only time to worship God. It's like, it's what we did, right? We checked the box. We, we, you know, if we're faithful enough, we tithe, you know, we, we show up for Sunday school, maybe if we're an all-star Christian um, and we, we show up for service, we worship, we listen to the sermon, we go eat and we go home. You know, if we're really hungry for Jesus, we stay for the Sunday night service. I don't even know if they have Sunday night services anymore, Terry. That may be what's wrong with the world because Sunday nights were yeah. the best. <laughs> um, but there but were yeah, I would just Wednesday say, nights, you know, Daddy. what are you saying? Sorry, I think it's delayed a little. That's okay. I was I was thinking, Corey, and it's wonderful to have friends praying for you. I think it's wonderful. Where two or more are gathered in his name, he'll be in the midst. But there's going to come a day that nobody's there, and we're going to need God. We're going to need to get a hold of the throne of God, and we're going to have to take the altar by the horns, whatever, however you say that, and we're going to need God for ourselves. It has to be a personal relationship, does it not? It has to be. I mean, that. like you said, when – when, when we're faced with judgment day and, you know, he's not going to say, you're not going to be able to point to this pastor that you sat under for years and years. You know, your pastor is supposed to encourage you and to, you know, to pastor you, but he's not a s substitute. There's only one way to the father and it's through Jesus. And that has to be a personal relationship. And he, and this is a revelation that I got the other day was whether we, accept salvation or not he is still our savior now watch this he's still savior right so he died on the cross for my sins whether i recognize that or not so even even when i come into salvation and say i accept jesus as my lord and savior he's still savior but until he becomes lord of my life there's a difference there see i can i can be saved and i can you know say the prayer and i can recite the thing and, and I can do that. But if I never activate my faith, if I never develop a prayer life, if I never develop spiritual disciplines to where God becomes not just Savior, right? Because his work on the cross was done. He is Savior. Whether I respect that or not or whether I receive that or not, he is still Savior of the world. He died for all of us, right? That's scripture. But being Lord of my life, that, that, that means there's something that I have to do, right? So salvation is an event. But then the next step is like, okay, well, what's my response to what Jesus has done in my life? And for many of us, we, we thought that salvation was all we had to do. And that's what Christianity looked like for me growing up is like, all I had to do was say this prayer. All I had to do was check this box. But there is so much more to Jesus, and there's so much more in your walk with Christ. And God calls us to come higher. He calls us to come closer to him. Um, he wants you, he wants to be Lord of your life, but here's the thing. We have to surrender it to him, right? He'll give us everything that we need. He'll provide all of everything he's already provided. He, he's our sustainer, but there has to be a surrender. And for, for me, my testimony is up until, you know, just recently, there's things in my life that I still hadn't surrendered to God. And, you know, yes, I'm saved, but if, is it is it just good enough to be bare minimum? It would be like, it would be like marriage. We're both married, right? It would be like just, you know, having a relationship, getting married, but never doing like, you know, going a step beyond that married people do. It would be like having no intimacy. Move closer to God. Take a step closer. Surrender whatever it is. It could be your finances. It could be your marriage. Marriage. It could be, you know, your job. It could be whatever it is. But God wants all of that. And if there's a challenge or a uh, something that you're believing God for, it may be connected to your obedience to surrender it back to Him. Amen. And you know something else? Uh, a lot of people think if you get saved, you never have to ask forgiveness again. Well, here's something about that. If you have a father or mother on earth, 
and you never call them up or you never have, have a relationship with them, even though they're your parents and you don't continue in that relationship to build that and to be in touch with them, then how, you know, how are they going to know us? How are we going to know them? It's good sure. to repent daily. It really is. I mean, a lot of people think that you don't have to, that it's, you know, everything's covered and it is covered. It is covered. But God wants us to talk to him every day. And before we can right. come into his presence, you know, it's, it's praising him, worshiping him, saying, Lord, you know, once you get in the presence of God, you're going to see and feel every fault you have. But you've also got to remember that that's why he died for us is because we're in the flesh. It's just a fine line right. between, I mean, we're, we're supposed to, you know, the Lord showed us how to pray the Lord's prayer. He did. He did. Yep. And that's a good example. Right. Ricky's watching, Angie's watching. My goodness, we've got a crowd here tonight. Corey, before we end, when you get through talking, whatever you want to talk mm -hmm. about, I want you to give an I want you to give a, a call to anybody that wants a closer walk, that wants salvation, whatever sure. they want. This is why we're here. We have to do this. Because the world is winding up. Things are happening. Keep your eyes on Jerusalem, especially. So I think it's very important the last days that we do what God's called us to do. So yeah. I give you that. No, absolutely. Time. Yeah. So um, let me pull the scripture up. Let's see. While Corey's looking at the scripture, I just, very I'm good. very amazed, Corey, at your walk with Christ. I'm very thankful for that. Well, I'm on the journey just like everyone else. Um, you know, I've come a long way, but I have yeah, so much right. further to go. And and I think um, I stayed yeah, stagnant true. and and just, you know, bare minimum for so long. And, and that's so widely accepted, you know. And there's just so much more to Jesus. We can, you know, you can, we have this saying at my church, my, my pastor, Pastor Kevin Lucas says, you can have as much of Jesus as you want. And it really is. He can really take you from glory to glory. He can take your finances from glory to glory. He can take your marriage from glory to glory. Just like we said, you have to submit to his lordship in every area of your life. If you want to go further with Jesus, surrender to him. Uh, he, will, he will take you further. Much further, to your point earlier, is much further than we can do in our own strength. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm talking about this. Uh, I'm looking up the scripture. Um, but Paul's talking about the thorn in his side. And I was talking through this question of what do you do when you know you've been faithful and you're following the will of God, but your prayers still aren't being answered? What do you do when, you know, you're doing all of the right things and you're still suffering? Um, I went through a season of my life, like many of us probably have, of, you know, God, I'm doing the right things, I'm checking all the boxes, but I'm still suffering. Um, the Bible says that it, it rains on the just and the unjust. Um, and, you know, this thought of that when I'm at my lowest point, that's when God gets the glory. That's when my strength, when I'm strongest, how can we say, you know, in my weakness, he is strong. How can I, you know, Paul talked about boasting in my suffering. How can we do that? How can we have that kind of faith? Um, I would say this. I would say that, and it's a common question. Usually we hear it as, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people, right? Why is that? Um, I'm finding out. I don't have the, I'm not a, uh, you know, just to preface this, I haven't gone to seminary. <laughs> I went to Bible school. Um, I'm not a theologian by any means. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, this is from what I'm finding out in my own life. And I'd love to hear feedback here. But I'm finding out that oftentimes God allows things to happen 
so that we can either learn something or that we can have a fresh reliance on him. Because like I said earlier, we go through seasons where we feel like we have it all together. And if there's any men on here, you know firsthand, because as men in our homes, in our marriages, we like to have it all together, right? We like to have all of the answers. We like to, uh, we like for there to be, you know, it's, if something's going to be wrong, like I'm going to fix it. So for men, especially, it's difficult to surrender and, and, and uh, live in that place of humility because we're just so, you know, wired to be the fixer. God says, I don't need you to do any of the fixing. I just need you to say yes to me. I just need you to trust my plan. But what I'm talking about here today is what happens when his plan actually allows us to go through a, a dry spell. What happens when, here's the thought, what happens when our expectation of God doesn't meet our experience? And we thought we would find God on the mountain and all things would be, you know, like the song says, um, everything is going to be great. But what happens when we find ourselves in the valley? Can we still worship him the same way in the valley as we do on the mountain? See, on the mountain, and when things are great, your faith isn't tested. You know, you can worship and thank God because of where he brought you, but you don't appreciate the mountain until you've been through the valley. Come on, somebody. So it's encouraging to me Amen. coming Amen. through a season of where, of, of where, you know, I felt like I was doing the right things, right? I've, I've, uh, I'm, I'm leading worship at my church. We're tithing. I'm doing all these right things. But if, if I'm not like surrendered to God, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's something I've been challenged with of um, why did God allow that thorn to be in Paul's side? You know, why did, uh, why do, why does God, maybe you've been praying for, for years for a loved one, or maybe it's something even personally in your own life. Why, why is God allowing me to deal with this situation? And our first response, this isn't natural. This isn't our, you know, this isn't usually how we respond to situations. We usually blame God or we get frustrated or we, we try to work it out or fix it. What I'm, what I'm challenging myself to do is when I'm faced with a storm or a challenge or whatever, I'm saying, God, what do you want to teach me? What are you trying to show me in this? And when we can take that and we can worship God with his, just as much devotion and fervor when things are great, as, and, and when things are bad as we do when things are great, I think that, that, uh, that, that's where the rubber meets the road. And that's where God can say, you know what, I see your hunger. And for many of us, maybe, maybe we, we aren't hungry for it anymore. Maybe, you know, and sometimes God will allow things to happen in our lives that will remind us of our reliance on him and, and that our source really is him, right? Because like we said, if, if we could do all of this, Terry, if I could save the world and I could do it all on my own, I wouldn't need Jesus. I wouldn't need to, you know, I wouldn't have had, he wouldn't have had to go on Calvary's cross to die for me. I wouldn't need, and here's the other thing. If I knew too, this is the other frustration is not knowing. Another thing as a male, surely, and, and uh, for anyone is we love to know like what to expect. Well, what happens, that's, that's what the, the kind of uneasiness that we have as Christians with faith is because we like, as humans, we like to know what is ahead. And God says, I don't, I don't need you to know. I just need you to trust. And if, and if God, Amen, great, brother. Amen. if God in his greatness can do all of this and save our lives and do all of this. And we, we, you know, if, for those of us who are believers and we come to the knowledge of that, you know, if he can do all of that, why is it, you know, we, I mean, there's nothing else that we need from him. Like if he, if he's faithful to do all of this, then why do we struggle so much to believe him to carry us the rest of the way? And for many of us, it's just that we haven't surrendered that to him. And look, here's the good news. It's a process. This isn't a condemnation to anyone. If you're listening here, this isn't a bashing by any means. This is me encouraging you. I want you to hear, hear my heart is that if you, if you feel far away from Jesus, take that next step. You don't, and I think this is what, this is what kept me from really surrendering to God, Jerry, is I felt like I had to go from 
dirty center overnight. You know, I would rededicate my life, draw the line in the sand, and I would say, I'm going to read 100 scriptures a day. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. And I'm going to do all this thing. And like, like it was something that was going to flip overnight. And look, I've, I've met people. Jesus can radically change your life in a minute. I believe that. But for many of us, the reality is it takes time and it takes uh, it takes years and it takes, you know, daily disciplines of getting in his word. And I would just say it, if 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 turning everything over to Christ seems um, seems like a challenge or seems big or maybe seems scary to you or what will people think or, you know, there's all these kind of thoughts that that, you know, we allow Satan to tell us of why we shouldn't surrender it all and move closer to Christ. And for many of us, and especially me in growing up in ministry, is I felt like I had to be perfect overnight. And that's not, that's not what sanctification looks like. And, and you know, it, even when God would radically change someone's life, I mean, there's still, like, there's a spiritual aspect, but then there's also this really tangible reality of we're still human, right? We talked about it earlier. We're still in the flesh, and we're still of sinful, sinful nature. nature. As long as we're in a world where, you know, the darkness is the ruler and sin abounds, we're always going to have that struggle. But be encouraged, I overcame Amen. the world, is what Jesus said. It, it's, he, he didn't say that you wouldn't Hallelujah. face persecution. Yeah. Even, even Jesus himself was persecuted. He was crucified. But, but isn't it good to know that even though Jesus was fully God, he was also fully man, Scripture tells us. He was fully in the flesh, and he dealt with temptation, the devil himself tempted him in the garden. And, you know, so we're not, I mean, if Jesus was tempted, you know, we're not, we're not, we're certainly not, um, you know, we're not going to be without temptation. So, but be of good cheer, but be encouraged. I've overcome. So I say all that to say this, to encourage somebody, just a, a simple, um, a simple encouragement that, if you've been walking and you've been trying things on your own and you feel like this thing called salvation or maybe you've been saved and you were raised in church your whole life and you you remember your grandma praying prayers over you and, you know, you have a spiritual background, but you have a distant relationship now, I would say, look, it starts with one step at a time. And it may be like you've moved one step and you may, you know, take a step back. That's the reality of just this, we're real. Right. And, and we preach this Christianity like we have to just be perfect overnight. But I, I came to tell you the devil is a liar and and God has you right where you where he wants you. Yes. But I'll just encourage you with this and I'll turn it over to you and you just, Amen. you know, tell me what your thoughts are. But I just feel like we've got to stop expecting like this overnight thing. And I'm just going to be on fire with God and everything like that's not real life for most of us. I know this isn't polished and this isn't like, I'm probably making some theologians cringe right now, but there's this struggle of, I can't do it all overnight. And God's do not saying, I don't, I don't want you to become an, I don't, I don't need you to become an overnight apostle. I don't need you to, you know, grow a beard, sell all your things and follow me like they did, you know, back then. I need you to just come closer to me. I just need you to, I just need you to tithe more. I just need you to pray more. I just, and it just, just take a step wherever you are in your faith walk. Just hear me. Just take a step closer to Jesus because that next step, he will meet you. And then take another step and he'll meet you. And take another step and he'll meet you. And take one more step and he'll meet you there. He's right there. Just take the step. Amen. 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 That has been a wonderful word. Now, Corey. Lead them into taking that step. Listen, listen if y'all are out there, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how low you've gotten. It doesn't matter your needs. They're never too much for the Lord. He says, cast all your care upon him because he cares for you, and he does. And you take right. one step toward God, and he'll take many toward you. Corey's going to lead us in prayer, right. and if there's anything between you and the Lord that you feel like you just want to surrender to him and become like a child, we have to become like a child that trusts Corey. You know when your baby wakes up, he doesn't worry all night about where his food's coming from. He doesn't worry of where he's going to go to school or whatever. He knows. He, he trusts you. 
The Bible says unless we become like little children, we can't even enter the kingdom of heaven. That's going to save us from a lot of trouble. Just becoming like a child, forgiving like a child, and trusting like a child. Okay, Corey, it's all yours. Yeah, that's so good. Um, I would just say again, you can have as much of Jesus as you want. And he, the scripture says he is standing at the door. And um, I would just say, if you, if you feel like you've done it on your own enough, and maybe, maybe someone listening has tried to fill pain of the past with different things. Maybe you've tried to cover up situations. Maybe someone hurt you in your past. Maybe, maybe you've been through brokenness. Maybe a friend talked about you. Maybe, your spouse cheated on you maybe. And these are all things that we don't talk about these things, but these are real hurts. These are real challenges that we face every day. There are broken people walking by us every day and we are all broken just like the rest of us. We're, we're each broken in our own ways, but God says, be, be of good cheer. I've overcome it. And I'm so grateful that God doesn't just, didn't just love us enough to send it, you know, God didn't love us enough just to send his son to die for us. And that's just like that just be one event. He, he loves us and he can, he sent his Holy spirit to, to guide us. And he wants to live on the inside of you. He wants to give you discernment to know how to live out your day. And he, he sent his Holy spirit to convict us and keep us on uh, uh, the right path. And, uh, but I just, I'm, I want to speak to that person who, feels unworthy or unqualified. Honestly, that's, that's, maybe you're like me and that kept you from really just pressing into what God had for me and really just going all in with Jesus is, you know what? I don't feel like I'm good enough. And here's the reality. You aren't. I'm not. None of us are. We are sinful by nature. And if, because we are sinful by nature, we needed a savior and his name is Jesus. And he's standing here, even in this moment, on this little Facebook Live, you may be in your car, you may be in your house, on this phone, you can pray a simple prayer like this and say, Jesus, come into my life. I surrender all that I am to you. I, I, I believe that you died for my sins and that you were buried. And three days later, you rose with all power, just like we celebrated on Sunday. And we do every year that Jesus, we believe that uh, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in us. And I believe that if you pray a simple prayer like that, like Cherry said, faith the size of a mustard seed, a, a child's faith, because he is father, right? And maybe, maybe you just need a reminder that you are a child of God wherever you are. He is yeah. father. He is your father. He wants to be your father. Yeah. But if you say a prayer like that, I believe that Jesus can save you right where you are and you don't have to, you don't have to be cleaned up to come to Jesus. He'll, he'll do that in his time. He'll, he'll, he'll clean up. He'll, he'll take all of that hurt. It may not happen in an instant. It may happen, may take days. It may take weeks, but God wants all of you. And sometimes he's got to get past all of what somebody did to you. And he's got to get past of this and all this baggage and, and this past and, the shame that you carry because you feel like you're not good enough. He, he can erase all of that. And he loves you right where you are. Sir, ma'am, listen, listen to the Holy Spirit calling you today. He wants to change your life today. Yes. Amen. Amen. And you know, this is a personal relationship with the Lord anyway. If you didn't pray that prayer with us, then, you know, you can pray, and sometimes you're hurting so bad, you don't know what to say. Just cry out the name of Jesus. Just cry out to the Lord. He will meet you there. He wants to. He says, I, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man will let me in, I mean, he will come in, and, and he will dine with you. He will fellowship with you. He will sup with you and you with him. He will never leave you or forsake you. I don't care what you've done, how far you've gone, it's never too far that Christ cannot reach. And if you're going down for the last time, so, then this message was you. And we so appreciate you, Corey. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for everything. 
that you spoke through Corey. I thank you for his life. I thank you for his family. I pray, Lord, that you use him in ways that he didn't even think he could be used. The obvious is there, Lord, but there's some things that you're going to do in his life that he didn't even expect. And, Father, I give you praise and glory for Corey's life. And I pray for Tracy that her eye will become healed. I pray for Brother Harwood and his situations. I pray for Kelly in her situation. I pray for everyone, Lord, listening. And for my grandchildren, I pray for my children. Lord, please let us realize this is the last days and that we should be witnessing around the world, at least in our worlds, Lord. In Jesus' name, we give you the honor and praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much, Corey. When you coming Absolutely. back? Well, yeah. we want. <laughs> well, let me too. let me leave you with this real quick. Um, all to Jesus I surrender all. To Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. Oh, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. Surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. Oh. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless, God bless you, sweetheart. We love you. You come back and join love us. Love you so much. You hear me? I love All you right. so we'll much. See you soon. God bless you. Bye, everybody. This is Same Bat Time, Same Bat Channel next Tuesday. We don't know when we have Corey back, whenever he wants to come back. God bless each and every one of y'all. This was a wonderful time. Tracy, get this posted to YouTube under Graham's Coffee Time. We love y'all. Bye.